Uh, check out this little box which I'm going to place on my hand and watch this. I'm just going to accelerate my hand to the right. I'm not going to do anything to the box except I leave it on my hand and I accelerate the box to my right. I find that the box also accelerates to the right. And that is due to friction. Because if there was no friction between the top of my hand and the bottom of this box, my hand would just slide away and the box would fall. So clearly it is friction that is accelerating this box. And if I asked you what is the direction of the frictional force, instinctively most of you will say opposite to the motion. And that is wrong because you can see it is friction that is accelerating the box and the acceleration is to my right, to your left, it's to my right, which means the force of friction must be to my right. In fact, friction is causing the motion, it is not opposing the motion. So now you are confused because from, a, from childhood you have learnt that friction opposes motion, friction opposes motion. So if you really want to understand friction, you shouldn't look at the motion as a whole, you should look at the two surfaces which are in contact with each other. Let me show you what the surfaces look like. If this is the palm of my hand and if this is the box on top of my hand, actually neither surface is perfectly smooth. In fact, if you took a microscope and took a look, you will find that each surface is quite rough and is full of hills and valleys like that, like so. I'm exaggerating it of course, but in order to explain the concept. Similarly, the palm of my hand is also full of hills and valleys and when I place the box on the palm of my hand and due to its own weight, it gets pressed down, some of the hills and valleys interlock. So let me draw that for you. So I'm going to take this box and place it on the palm of my hand so that some of the hills and valleys interlock. Now, it should be easy for you to see that if I pull the hand to the right, it drags the box along in the same direction. So you see, friction on the box is in the forward direction. So what happened to friction opposes motion? Now some of you are attached to that sentence, friction opposes motion, you don't want to give it up. You have a choice now. You either always look at the two surfaces which are in contact and decide what is the direction of friction. That's what I do. For example, if I leave my hand as it is and instead drag the box in that direction, you can see if I drag the box, the hills and valleys will resist. In that case, friction opposes motion. So in some cases, it seems to oppose motion. In some cases, it seems to cause motion. So to get that absolutely clear, there are two ways of dealing with it. One way is to look at the two surfaces which are in contact, look at the hills and valleys and see which way the friction acts. The other way is instead of saying friction opposes motion, you can say friction opposes relative motion. That is, if I come back to this example, relative to the box, my hand is trying to move to the right. So the frictional force on my hand is to the left. If the friction on my hand is to the left, by Newton's third law, friction on the box is to the right. And friction is what caused it to accelerate. So if you like, you can choose that. Okay. Let me give you two or three more examples. Right? You have to understand one thing very, very important, very important point you have to understand. An object cannot accelerate itself. Now certainly I can move my hand, I can accelerate my hand. You might think, oh, you're accelerating yourself. I'm not accelerating myself as a whole. If I want to accelerate the center of mass of my body, there has to be an external force. So normally what do we do? We place our foot on the ground and try to drag it, slide it backwards and friction pushes me forwards. So when I'm walking, it is friction that's propelling me forward. It's not opposing my motion, it's causing the motion. But what do I do? I put my foot down and try to slide it backwards and friction opposes that and sends me forward. 
without friction, I'd just be sliding out here and performing some kind of a moonwalk and I wouldn't be able to accelerate forwards. So friction is not our enemy, it's our friend. Okay, what about a car? Now you might think, if I ask you the question, what makes a car accelerate? You might say it's the engine. Nope, engine is internal. You need an external force to accelerate the car. Okay, let's look at the wheel of a car. Okay, if this is the wheel of a car, what the engine does is provide some kind of a rotatory force. We call it torque. Okay, you'll learn about that in 11th standard. What the engine does is tries to rotate the wheel, let's say in that direction. Now again, if you want to understand friction, don't look at the wheel, don't look at the car, look at the two surfaces which are in contact. The bottom of the wheel of the car is trying to slide backwards. And all the hills and valleys are interlocked. When it tries to slide backwards, the ground opposes that, exerting a forward force. And that is what accelerates the car forwards. You need that external force. Then why do we need the engine? The engine is there to try to rotate the wheel. And we can figure it out later, doing a lot of calculations, that the energy actually comes from the petrol that's being burnt. But we'll leave that aside for now. Today's topic is simply friction. Same thing with the bicycle. You get on top of the bicycle, you press the wheel, what happens? The wheel tries to rotate backwards, the slide backwards at the bottom of the wheel, friction propels you forward. That's how you start moving. Okay, let me give you a second example of friction. Uh, all of you have probably gone to an airport, you've seen a conveyor belt carrying your luggage. Now let's say this conveyor belt is moving along. So I'll draw a crude picture of the conveyor belt. This is the conveyor belt. It's actually on rollers and these rollers are rotating like that and that keep the conveyor belt moving in that direction. Let's say at a speed u. Now you come in and place your suitcase on top of the conveyor belt and it starts moving with the conveyor belt. Why does that happen? Friction. Because if there was no friction between the conveyor belt and the bottom of the suitcase, the conveyor belt would just slide and the suitcase would just remain there on top of it. There'd be no horizontal force to push it along. So this is another example where when you look at it from outside, friction is not opposing the motion, it is in fact causing the motion. This is why I keep saying that sentence friction opposes motion, you must take it and use it carefully. Again, I'll explain what's going on. So I place a suitcase out here and I'm not going to make it touch out here. But look at the two surfaces. This one is actually rough, full of hills and valleys. So is the conveyor belt. And when these hills and valleys sort of interlock, you can see that the conveyor belt, when it moves, it drags the suitcase along with it. So the frictional force on the suitcase is in the forward direction. And by Newton's third law, there's an equal and opposite force on the conveyor belt in the opposite direction. This is what accelerates the suitcase. Friction again is helping us move. Now if you're still insisting on somehow hanging on to the sentence friction opposes motion, well, like I said before, use friction opposes relative motion, right? Let's look at how this works. Con compared to the suitcase, the conveyor belt, that is relative to the suitcase, the conveyor belt is sliding forwards. So friction opposes that and the force on the conveyor belt is to the left. And there is an equal and opposite force on the suitcase to the right which accelerates it. Alternately, you might look at it this way. From the point of view of the conveyor belt, the suitcase is actually sliding backwards. So friction is in the forward direction which takes it in the forward direction. Actually, from the point of view of the conveyor belt, a suitcase, stationary suitcase, a suitcase which is stationary in the ground frame is actually moving backwards. What does friction do? Slows it down and brings it to a rest with respect to the conveyor belt, which means seen from outside, it's moving with the conveyor belt. Okay, think about this. It's a beautiful example. And I'm going to throw a little bit of a challenge for you to think about. Friction, when there is two surfaces sliding against each other, produces heat. In this problem, where did that energy for that heat come from? 
Okay, I'm not going to answer this right away. I want you to think about this because it's a beautiful question. Where did the heat come from? Heat comes whenever there is relative sliding between the two surfaces. Once the suitcase is not sliding with respect to the conveyor belt and moving with it, then there is no sliding between the two, no heat is generated. Okay, but in the initial part, until the suitcase picks up the velocity from zero to u, there is relative sliding and heat is generated. My question is, where is that energy coming from? Is it work done by friction? Well, is friction doing positive work on the suitcase? On the suitcase, friction is acting in the forward direction and the displacement is also in the forward direction. So the work done by friction on the suitcase is positive, but that is equal to the change in the kinetic energy of the suitcase. Work it out. Then where did the heat come from? Okay, I'm going to leave it there, let you think about it.